Today on The State of Us, you only have so much time. Are you using it correctly? And what's the best way to tame stress? Welcome to The State of Us. I'm your host, Justin T. Weller, joined today by the one and only, your friendly redneck liberal and the senior resident historian here at True Chat, Mr. Lance Jackson. Today, we get to talk about stress, uh, and not just stress, but time. Two things that I think are on a lot of people's minds, or at least are definitely affecting us. Uh, When you do the math, it really hits. After two life-changing years, decisions about how we spend our hours feel even weightier. So we're going to talk about, are you using your time correctly? And what is a simple way to tame stress? Specifically, walking, nature, and friends. We're going to talk about all of that. Uh, But of course, we couldn't get started, Lance, if we didn't have a word of the day, right? Well, we can't do that because... We haven't done one for the last two shows, <laughs> so I don't have one. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> I'm glad you remembered today of all days. <laughs> well, I figured at some point you'd object, and you know, hey, <laughs> no, I, the I word thought we were going, forget. <laughs> I thought we were going a new direction. I'm, I'm less. Well, we'll, 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 we'll take it a new direction. I'm less anxious. I'm, I'm not worried about it. I'm not <laughs> okay. Thumbing the we're dictionary. We're taming your stress by getting rid yeah, of it. Yeah, I was. Now you just yanked up my anxiety for the show. <laughs> <laughs> I hear I was. Yawning, relaxing, and, okay. you know, and then all of a sudden you yank my stress level up with, oh, what's the word of the day? Yeah, that's what it is, folks. We're, there is no more where we talk about the word of the day. It's just Lance has chosen it and none of us know what it is and he wins every episode. So, Well, you guys, you, you're all too young, but you don't remember the Pee Wee Herman show. And he had a word of the day and the only time he knew what it was, when he said it, a bell would ring on the cartoon. So that's how you knew what the word of the day was. The audience knew, but Pee Wee didn't know. And when Pee Wee would say the word, then the bell would go off. And that's how Pee Wee knew what the word of the day was. Kind of works the same way. So uh, let's talk about how you spend your time. Because this is something that, oh, I, I know that it's it's been on my mind over the years. You know, it is, well, what do we value, right? Or Or you're doing a thing and you ask yourself, Am I really spending time on this? Is that really is this really what I want to spend my time on? And the author kind of points out that, you know, she used to um, tally the nights that she worked late, program her phone to monitor her minutes on social media, and then inevitably ignore those and pow plast the limits. And on a recent Perfect Spring Day, she pried herself away from her computer for a run, passing the elementary school her oldest child will attend in a few months. And she was watching moms and dads stream out the doors, holding little hands. And all she could think was, am I using my time right? The clock, of course, has always ticked. But there's something about this moment, uh, referring specifically to the pandemic and kind of coming out of it, that has helped some people realize that our time is, in fact, finite. Uh, You only get so much. Just like there are only 24 hours in a day, whether or not you like it, right? And there's nothing that any of us can do, at least not at the moment, to change the fact that we have a fixed amount of time. So when you do the math, you start to think about how are you spending that time? Well, for example, if you're a baby boomer in the United States, you spend about 47 hours a week watching television. 47 hours. So almost two days of the seven days in a week you spend watching TV. So that's an example of when we tally up the time, we start to think about how are we spending it? What are we doing with it? And the purpose of this article is to talk about um, what are the things that make your time feel valuable? Do those things bring value or do they make you feel disconnected? Um, If you're a working professional, you might spend a lot of time every week, for example, checking email. You may not say, it's really not that many times. You know, how many times a day do I really check? Well, I can tell you I did this, oh, I don't know, five or six years ago after reading Tim Ferriss's Four Hour Work Week. Interesting book. I'm not going to proclaim that, you know, everything and it works exactly the way he says. But if you've read it, you'll know what I'm talking about, which is one of the things that he advocates for is deciding that you're only going to check email at these times every day. 
And again, it seems like a small thing, but I can tell you that the amount of time that I spent on email was cut in about half by doing that. And I didn't get less email. All that happened was I spent less time checking the email. Uh, Because again, it is small things like that that you don't realize. It's like, how many times did you pull out your phone to look at notifications? Well, I got to get rid of the notifications. It doesn't take that much time. And at the end of the day, you know, you find out you spent 30 minutes scrolling and getting rid of notifications. Did you, I mean, is that really how you want to spend 30 minutes? Because you know, the other thing you could have done with 30 minutes, Lance, you could have used that 30 minutes. You could have used that 30 minutes one time to have turned off the notifications Uh, and then don't get them at all. I thought you were going to say watch another TV show. That Well, yeah, you could do that (laughs) if you're a boomer. I mean, you know. Well, you know, I take I take offense at that, but that's okay because I you think take I'm, offense. We're, we're, yeah, we're we're in a different stage of life, and um, I I have slowed down, and it is important what you remember and and what you don't remember, and um, other than the listeners' email that I send that people send in to us uh, to podcast at thestateofus.org, dot I probably check my email once a month. So see, I'm way ahead of you. And that's only to clear out all the spam. There's usually two things in there that I should have seen in the moment. So that's how all of you know that in my circle of people that I come in contact with on a daily or weekly basis, you don't email me anything if you want me to see it in a timely fashion because I don't check mine. So I I give myself a plus there. So I'm feeling pretty good about myself as far as valuing my time because I don't have that email problem. But I am also in a different stage of life. As you always point out, you know, I'm the boomer and you always use those boomer references. But um, (laughs) hey, that doesn't sound like something I do make it far enough to get here. You start to realize all this stuff that you're talking about. Yeah, it doesn't matter. That's why I don't do it anymore. You know, the only generation, Lance, that I like better than boomers is Gen Z. They're the generation behind you know, millennials or yeah. the or after. I just, not sure what the right terminology there is. And because we're hating is that on- the, Is that the one between the two of us? That's Bradley. Well, that's that's behind you. Behind, yeah. yeah the, young, the, young, yeah. the young ones, uh-huh. the youngest. The ones that don't even know how to go from page two to page six to, in a newspaper. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The, they, they've never that's even right. held a really newspaper. Stru- really, well, yeah. They, they it, struggle it ends with here. like yes. that. We had to show them, you know, column reading because mm-hmm. where do I go now? Um. Anyway- but to to not just, that I'm hating on that generation at all. Oh no, definitely. I, I do hope they listen. You're like, yes, you're they not. could learn a lot. So and if we, not, I'll explain it to them. We, I'll explain we, all the things we, they need to learn. We've got the incredible 47 hours a week by boomers on their their precious TV, right? But Gen Z's really not any better. Uh, today, teenagers are spending almost 45 hours on their phones every week. There you go. To put that in perspective, folks, that's 2,340 hours a year or the equivalent. How many days in a year, Lance? 365. Or the equivalent of 97 and a half days a year are given to your phone. The three that were listening just turned off the show. That's bad, because one of those is our producer, so we're in trouble. Well, I'm not sure he listens. We've asked him. We've asked <laughs> That's him. Right. Like, yeah. What? How'd you like that show? I don't know. I, just I was on it. my phone. I was on my phone. <laughs> I missed it. Uh, well, you know what's cool about, you know, you mentioned TV, though. Streaming? Yeah. That 47 hours? I'm getting a lot more shows watched. <laughs> Because I'm into that streaming stuff. Uh-huh. You take out the, eight, the, the, the 12 minutes of commercials. I'm watching a lot more shows. The screen time's the same, but I'm getting a lot more I'm, content. I am. I'm learning a lot more. <laughs> uh, plus, you know, the other thing, folks, right, is it's not we're hating on the boomers, too, here because they spend, you know, they spend uh, almost the same amount of time as kids do on their phones. millennials don't do anything, right? No, they're the millennials great. don't do anything wrong. They spend all their time reading and in nature uh-huh. and volunteering. That's, right. that's what they're known for. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <laughs> living off their parents. Yes, yep, yeah, in their basement. Okay. No, that's why they have all this time to. <laughs> they can't afford a phone or or a TV, so you know they they just out of luck. But the 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 point that we're getting at here is well, the the point that I had to make that was very important, not really, but was the point about boomers is you know they're not actually watching 
that much TV every day because, you know, you say 47 hours, they're asleep half that time. I mean, they, you know, fall asleep and nap. And it's like, so I, eh, this doesn't really count the same. The screen time, the kids aren't sleeping. They're, you know, they're engaged. They're looking at that phone. So um, I do have to have to throw that caveat in there. The study doesn't, the study does not acknowledge that anywhere, but I thought that it was an important fact to bring up. You know, Lance does not get in 47 hours of TV a week. He probably gets in 20 something hours of TV a week. And the rest of the time is, is nap hey, time. I just got back from a five week vacation. <laughs> no TV, right? We turned on the TV zero amount of time. Wasn't that great? And we've kept it up. Yeah. We have kept it up. We don't, we do not turn the TV on. Life is better without TV. Until the evening. <laughs> now I'm, my wife is newly retired and we're both retired and we just got back from a, a, Five week vacation across the United States and and out to the west and back up through Texas and we did not turn on the TV the whole time we were gone. Nor did we get on. She was on Facebook less than fifteen minutes a day, and we came back better than we've ever been. Really, really sounds like we should just pretty much do away with our show. <laughs> huh? No, because what's today's show about? Oh, right. How we spend our time. Yeah, how we spend our time. time. I'm I'm trying to give you a different way to spend your time. So I'm not down on the show. You need to listen to the show because you can get multiple things done while you're listening. You can relax in the pool. You can, you know, turn off that TV and listen to us. You can be eating your fruit for breakfast and your, your healthy brand for lunch yeah. and then listening to us. So this I sounds like a boomer dream. It's all about a pod. I, I just lived it and I'm, I'm better for you it. You live the pod, the pod dream. Yes. <laughs> okay. Well, I, I live the dream of, of, of what I did. And now you're trying to pull me back into it and yank up all my anxiety and turn my mic on and off and play dings in my hair and ear, my ears. <laughs> my hair, my ear, my, my, the hair that's in my ear. It's all over. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Wow. You want a sobering statistic here. So think about this as we think about this as we transition. If it's not enough to realize that 97 days a year is what the average young person spends on their phone. And remember, that's 97 whole days. Keep this in mind. You might think, well, that means that they have a little over two thirds of the rest of their year that's not spent on the phone. So is it really that bad? Well, let's not forget that we spend about a third of our year asleep. So there just went all that time that we're not on our phone, which means that half, approximately half of your waking hours are spent on your phone. Now think about that. So that means it's up to Bradley to accomplish anything in his generation because the rest of his generation doesn't have time to get anything done. No. That's why Bradley's feeling all that stress (laughs) and doing 12 things. That's right. Really stressing. A good thing we're going to talk about What to do with that stress. What Bradley needs to do instead of doing 12 different things, Bradley, we're going to tell you. Keep it here on The State of Us. We'll be right back. So we we left off with, you know, how the average member of Gen Z, um, most of whom are in their teenage years right now, is spends, right, almost half of their waking hours on their phone. Here's another sobering statistic, though, for you. Nick Mazing, who's a 43-year-old research director at a financial intelligence platform, he crunched some numbers and he figured out that the majority of the time that he will have with his son, who is now 10 years old, will be gone by his 18th birthday. Just once more, for those of you that true have that. kids, no, that's true. the majority of the time that he's going to have with his son, who's 10 years old right now, will be gone by his son's 18th birthday. So what's he doing? He's trying to leave his phone in the other room when they're together. And he has it programmed to ring only when someone in his address book is calling him. I, by the way, Lance, I read that. And I'm like, I got to do that. I don't know why I haven't done that yet. But I, that seems like that ought to be a simple thing to do. If they're not in my contact list, by God, the phone's not going to ring. They can leave a message. Or in Lance's case, they can't even leave a message. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> and and if it doesn't pop up that you're in my book, I don't answer the call. That's right. When you call Lance, <laughs> if you want to leave a message, you get this nice recording that says, this user has a voice mailbox that has not yet been set up. 
I am goodbye. Ahead, I am ahead of the trend. That's what you're saying. That's right. I'm on this guy. You're setting this, the trend. I am trend setting. Just like I always have. That's People just right. are slow to catch up. <laughs> uh, so anyway, the reason I bring that up is because I think it is important if you really start looking at, and I've I've tried to be conscious about that. Um, I had to get a new phone recently because my other one kind of died on me. And that meant I had to, well, I didn't have to, but I chose to reset my screen time limits, right? In other words, preventing how long you can spend using certain apps. And I can tell you that um, if you really start to look, you'll be amazed. I mean, I did that exercise, Lance, with two, two Gen Z uh, who work uh, out here and had said, you know, how, how many, how much time do you think you spend on TikTok each day? Approximately, you know, they had underestimated by about half. And keep in mind, we're not talking about like, oh, you know, I thought I spent 20 minutes and I spent 40 minutes. It's no, I thought I spent two hours and I spent four hours a day <laughs> just on TikTok. You know how many hours a day I spent on TikTok? None. That's good guess. Well, you don't even ever even been on TikTok. Have I you? have not. Okay. Have you ever seen a TikTok? Um, I have. Okay. Well, see, you're there. It is. So anyway, the point is not just hating on young people because we can all do this. We all have different things. I don't spend a lot of time on social media on my phone. Um, I do spend a ton of time like on the phone part of the phone and the texting part of the phone and the email part of the phone. Basically, everything that's work related. Um, so that is a way by setting those limits uh, and. A big thing is I, I take a lot of time when I first get my phone, I hate doing it, is to turn off basically 90% of notifications. Because notifications, the whole intent there, Lance, right, is to get you to look at your darn phone. And it's like, no, 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 because then it sucks you in and you start looking at stuff that you didn't even, you know, it's not even the thing notification was about. But you look at that notification, you see another one, and then before you know it, there went 10 minutes. And it's like, why did I lose 10 minutes just then? I don't know. Anyway, back to it. So what about walking, Lance. This is something you and I both enjoy doing, right? Do you know what I do when I go for a walk? Hmm. I don't take my phone. That's helpful. No notifications then, right? Yeah. I don't have to worry about it. Doesn't ring. Don't have to worry about spam. Don't have to worry about anything. I just don't take it. I've gotten some really hectic, anxiety-ridden texts at times when I get back. Yeah. I was trying to reach you, Dad. Where are you? Is everything okay? <laughs> Text back, yeah, I was just going for a walk. You know, did, didn't, you know. I mean, I remember, right? Okay, boomer time here. Boomer time. I remember when- That should be the new segment. We'll replace the word have, of the day with boomer time. You didn't have <laughs> a phone, right? Yeah. So if something bad happened, it might take a day or two or a couple hours for you to find out. Because there had to be, you know, a calling tree set up and, you know, <clears throat> aunts had to call each other and then they called cousins and then they called, you know, and it might take a few hours to find something because my kids are like, well, what if something bad happened to me? You know, you don't have your phone. It's like, guess what? You live three hours away. It, it's, I'm not going to make it in time anyway. <laughs> and it's obviously already <laughs> happened. So why does it matter that I find out about it right away? So when they your, listen to the show, they're going to get mad at me. But we've had those conversations. I'm like, do you guys remember there never used to be a phone? I used to take your mom out on a date and there was no phone. Her mom and dad couldn't get a hold of us. My mom and dad couldn't get a hold of us. We were 16, 17 years old, just out there in the city in of the Columbus <laughs> on our own with no way for anybody to reach us. Scary. No, it's not. That's how we grew up. Terrifying. They're more scared now, right? Mm. They're our young people. The the, the more anxiety day. ridden, okay. scareder now, and they have instant scareder. access to everybody. <laughs> yeah, scareder, scaredest, so, scaredest. Yeah. yeah. Okay. At its core, time is really about memory and what you'll take with you after it's the not seconds more have, have passed. It's not more scared than most scared. <laughs> I did. I did. Just because people say that doesn't mean that it's grammatically correct. The the problem with adding boomer time to the show would be that it would take a lot more time than the word of the day. <laughs> but we'd get grammar lessons, so that'd be good. It's not mansplaining. It's just being correct. <laughs> wow. Okay. Well, I'm glad that's getting left in and that I'm not the one to have said it because... <laughs> 
Um, I really hope I'm going to make sure to text um, your daughters when this is done and tell them to be sure to listen to this show. They've heard it all before. Uh, They know. (laughs) They know. They've heard. So we like walking. And there's a reason that we like walking. When I say we, I don't mean just Lance and I. If you go on a walk and if you do it in nature and you do it with somebody you like, significant other, friend, family member, you know. That's why I walk alone most of the time. (laughs) I don't like nobody. Uh, I spent 40 years as an introvert being around people. Now I'm old. I, I, I don't have to be around people. I get to choose whether I want to be around people. That's right. Not. Well, you go on walks with your wife. And guess though. what? Well, yeah, I want to be around her. She doesn't count. Okay. Well, she's always around. <laughs> she's, always she's been around forever. <laughs> she was around before I dated her. She's not even a person, really. It's just there. <laughs> Man, we're really racking them up today. So anyway, 87% of adults said that ra- rising prices due to inflation are a significant source of stress. See, there's people stressing about stuff. That's right. Can you control high prices? Can you control summer travel snafus? Can you control a virus ever morphing? You can't control those things. So why are you worried about it? A brisk walk in nature with a friend combines three of the most effective stress reducing and resilience building. And notice that I love that right there because that's so important. We talk, we always talk about reducing stress. What about resisting stress in the first place? Resilience building techniques. No, resilience this is not stress. It's like how to take on the world, right? That's right. Yeah. And those three things, according to scientific research, the three most effective stress reducing and resilience building techniques include physical exercise, social connection, and spending time in. In nature. Going for a walk with a friend. And where do I live? In nature. I live in nature. <laughs> I can walk around my backyard and I'm in nature. I don't even have to go to the park no. and breathe smoggy air. Smoggy. I just get to walk down the line of my creek and <clears throat> look at the fish and, and watch the possums jump in and avoid a snake every once in a while and see the deer roaming into the cornfield every once in a while, jumping the fence and coming into my yard. Yeah, I don't have to go drive 20 minutes to some park to go for a walk. I just get to walk out my back door. That's what I see. An ever-growing number of scientific studies, Lance, show that chronic stress, in other words, ongoing, right, stress, can lead to a host of health problems, including depression, heart disease, immune system problems, and obesity. About three quarters of people that were surveyed by the American Psychological Association said that they are overwhelmed by the number of crises facing the world. Half said that housing costs are a significant stressor, but not all stress is bad. Stress in small spurts, which is called acute stress, right? Not chronic stress, is actually crucial to survival. So what happens when we get stressed? Well, there's a lot of different things, but why do walks help? Specifically, walking briskly actually activates the body's uh, stress response. And when the walk is over, the stress comes back down to baseline. Regular exercise helps your stress response become more efficient, thereby improving your resilience, right? Because in other words, we're all going to get stressed. That's part of life. And in fact, it's good because at certain times getting stress releases adrenaline and helps you get things done more efficiently, helps you respond to crises. That's a good thing. Spending your time that way all the time, very bad not good for your health. So what you're doing there by taking that brisk walk, right, is you're training, just like with muscles, just like with anything else, right, practice. You are practicing healthy elevation of stress and healthy reduction of stress, making sure your body knows, hey, I can calm down now, right? The stress is over. Woo, I can relax, right? Or I need to kick it into gear. And you're just, I mean, it's, you know, pretty basic, but that's the first thing to talk about. We're going to talk about the benefits of nature, though, And friends, what about those benefits? Keep it here on The State of Us. We'll be right back. You know, I just want to jump in here before you get started. Okay. And there's there's been research done. Uh Research? Mm -hmm. That's good. By... The authors of this book about the connection between mental health and nature. Mm. And it says as little, because everybody's like, oh, time, I don't have time, right? 
as little as 10 minutes of sitting or walking in nature can decrease a person's heart rate, blood pressure, and those cortisol levels that you were talking about. So you don't need a lot of time, just 10 minutes. And you don't have to do anything. You can walk or you can just sit there. Right. Just sit If there. walking sounds like too much, just sitting sit in nature. Outside, listen to the birds. Listen to, you know, listen to the trees talk to one another. So those 10 you know, minutes- the trees do talk to one another. Yes, we've had that episode. Mm-hmm. So as little as 10 minutes is what you're saying. What that's going to do is it's going to lower my heart rate, blood pressure, and cortisol levels. So there you go. 10 minutes. Who doesn't have- Think of 10 minutes of TV, 10 minutes of TikTok, 10 minutes of checking your phone. That's pretty doable. 10, mi- 10 minutes. That's all you have to do. So when you start to plan your day, put that 10 minutes in there. If you're like me and you're a morning person, do it in the morning. If you're an evening person, afternoon, do it during your lunch break, whatever. But who really, if you stop and be honest with yourself, can't find 10 minutes? to turn off the TV, to turn off the phone, to turn off the rest of the world and just go sit on your porch or sit on your balcony or sit outside somewhere in nature. 10 minutes. I think part of the problem, right? I mean, you benefit. Now, do you benefit more from doing more? Of course. But the point is 10 minutes will benefit your life. It will make you more productive. We've talked about that before. You work so long and then there comes that point where the return of your work starts to diminish. Can't, don't know how many times I used to tell my daughters, they would be up past 11 o'clock doing homework and I would tell them to go to bed. And they both were really good students. Like, dad, I can't go to bed. I still have to finish this math homework. And I said, you're going to stay up past midnight to finish that work. You go to bed now, get up, and it'll take you 10 minutes to finish it. And lo and behold, they would do that because when they would, because they were tired, they'd been at sports practices, whatever. And they were trying to, they were working past their efficient time and they would go to bed and they'd wake up and grab a pop tart and sit down at the table. And in five minutes they would finish what they were struggling, spending more than an hour to finish the night before. So there is something to taking those short respites, those Ding, 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 ding. I just won the word of the day, respite. Taking a short (laughs) respite. And Ah. then getting back to work. You'll become more productive. You'll get, see, what that means is, folks, you'll make the boss happy because you'll get more work done because you took the little break. And, And the other thing is the article about spending time isn't just about getting more work done. It's about getting the important work done. You might say, well, all work is important. Okay. Well, I mean, yeah, we can have that debate, but the most important, how about that? The most important work rather than the important work, because that's one of the things, instead of trying to clear the decks, reach inbox zero or check every errand off of your to-do list, acknowledge that you lack the time for even a fraction of the things that you want or need to do. Learn to tolerate that feeling. And a great way, by the way, to learn to tolerate that feeling is spending time in nature, walking, being with friends, right? Uh, Because sometimes, even though that's uncomfortable, even anxiety provoking, having lots of clamoring things for your attention is going to create more stress. So do the most important things, accept that you can't do them all, and prioritize, right? Make time. And notice I said make time. You can't make more time, but you can choose how you spend your time. So when I say make time, that's what I'm referring to. Make time for the walks. Uh, Because, you know, again, like that, uh, like we pointed out before, you've got 97 days a year of phone time. So you can certainly find a couple days a year for walking. Well, two things that we've talked about and I, I, I've tried to advise young people when I talk to them is that you need to really figure out what is important because I can remember things that I missed in important people in my life. I missed an event. I missed something because I thought I had something important to do. And now I can't remember what it was that I did but I can remember that I missed the event. And so when you really, you know, so who are the important people? 
and, you know, and what are you going to do? And the second thing is you're talking about what you can't get done. We always make the list longer than what we can accomplish. The really simple thing to do, the trick that I learned is, and this is me, I, write, I like to write, but I write down, what did I get done? Or I stop and think, well, what did I get done today? And I list off five or six things and it's like, that's a pretty good day. And there was a, a, a famous basketball coach, college basketball coach, Jim Valvano, who at the peak of his career was sentenced uh, to a life with cancer. And he was dying and he got up and he received an award. And it was within the last few weeks of his life. And he told people, you know, paraphrasing here, but what makes a good day? If I laugh, I love, and I cry, I had a good day. Yep. It's a very famous, very emotional speech that every once in a while when I get somebody who's really depressed, I send that to them. I say, wait a minute. Did you laugh today? Did you love somebody today? And did you cry today about something? If you did, you had a full day. Yep. And if you got more than that done. Great. Then, then you had an extraordinary day. But that's, that's all you need for a full day, you know, is to laugh with somebody, to cry with somebody, and love somebody. Uh, yeah. Everything beyond that is icing, right? Just, just, the, just the bonus. Um, I was curious because I wanted to give our listeners like a real world example of how much time we give away to TV and electronic devices every year. Keep in mind that the time that it takes Lance and I to do this show every year. And by the way, folks, I'm not talking about just a sitting down recording. I'm talking about planning and recording the show. Okay. I'm factoring all that in. That equates to about one eighth the amount of time that you spend every year on your phone. You could do multiple episodes a week of a podcast every week that require hours of planning. And that would only eat up an eighth of your total screen time. 12%. 12% of your screen time. Yep. Okay. Well, we're at 2,340 hours a year versus 300 hours. What the, what's that? Did I do I did that wrong? You might have just blown your whole thing. Yeah. Okay. Well, still. <laughs> what was your I, screen time? 23 hours? 2,340 hours. 2,340. Right? 10 would be 230. So, yeah, you're close. Yeah, I thought so. So, 23. Yeah. Okay. You're, you're good. Okay. Good. You're close. It's about 12, 12 to 13%. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 8, 12, you know, whatever. <laughs> 12. There, there it is. 1 8. 1 8. I just yeah. I just did some math for you, man. Okay, okay. And I can do that in my head because, uh, yeah. you know, I had the elementary school teachers who drilled that stuff into you because, yes. oh, wait a minute, we didn't have a calculator. I thought I did so, pretty so, good. So we had okay. to learn that, yeah. All right, all right. One-eighth is one eighth. 12%. Yeah. Right. Anyway. Actually, it's 12.67, but it's, you know. Now that we got over the uh, millennial math error there. Uh, well, you, actually, I, I wasn't you didn't wrong. Make. Right. But yeah, no, I was confused by the 12%, but yeah. Anyway, point is, <laughs> you can I do mean, a lot, and that, but that's that's it's, remarkable. You can do a lot, and you, you can still put keep down your phone. You can still keep the other seven eighths of your screen time, and we're not even talking. It's not like oh, get rid of my, you know, phone, and now I can do a podcast. Now, we're not saying that. Get rid of twelve percent of the time that you spend one eighth on your phone. That's it, and now you can do a podcast. Now, you can't do it as good as Lance and I do because, you know, you'd have to be as good as us. But you can do one, so you'll have the time to do one. Let's put it that way, right? Or anything else uh, that you want to do that and might be a similar don't forget your 10 to 30-minute walk. Yeah. With a friend. No, well, you can do far less than an eighth. You can squeeze that in because we're talking about like five hours a week or so that's being budgeted there to come up with your, you know, 300, 50, hour, 50 weeks a year sort of thing. So, I mean, yeah, you could you could do a lot of walking with an eighth. You know, so there, look, cut it down to, you know, what, six eighths. And now, 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 now you've got, yeah. You and, know, an eighth can be spent on walking cut, and an eighth can be doing a podcast. And oh my gosh. Teach you math. One eighth plus one eighth is uh -huh. two eighths. Yes. Which would be one fourth uh -huh. or 25%. So three fourths. Right. You can keep three fourths, 75% of your, of your screen phone time. time. And you can wow. walk 
an hour a day mm -hmm. and do a podcast just with your screen time. So all those people, I don't have time to do that thing. Mm. And what's the benefits of walking? Oh, well, it reduces stress. It builds your resilience to stress. It improves your immune system response, lowers your blood pressure, um, and uh, improves your mood because it affects the functioning of serotonin systems in the brain, which is directly responsible for mood, and the dopamine system, which is involved in anticipating rewards. It also indicates uh, that it will increase the release of the neuropeptide Y, which is a substance that is linked to stress reduction. So you're not going to get everything done on your list anyway. So prioritize and do the most important things. That's it. Spend time with the people you care about. Get out in nature. Do some walking. Laugh, love, cry. You got it. Ta-da. So Lance, why we do this show today? Well, J Just because? Well, partly Bradley was yelling at us and said he needed a show to, oh, okay. to put up. But no, well, that's a good is, reason. Bradley is yelling is a pretty scary thing. We care about our listeners. That's why we did the show today. And here at True Chat, we have a mission. And our mission is to educate our audience by providing honest, open, and respectful conversations. And that's what we've done. Everybody's on you. You need to walk more. You need to do this. You need to, okay. And you can't, well, I don't have the time. We've tried to break it down to show you that we all, not just you, but Justin and I as well, we have the time to do those things that are the most important and that will benefit us the most, not only mentally, but physically and emotionally as well. And so that's why we had the show is because it's doable, folks. And so many times we throw our hands up and I can't figure it out. We just figured it out. We've taken the 35 <laughs> minutes that you need and explained it to you. And if you have any questions, send us an email podcast at the state of us.org and Justin will answer it because I don't read emails. <laughs> Somebody someday will get to it because we're trying to check email less. So, uh, but please send us one because we would like to read it eventually. I'll print it out on a piece of paper and hand it to Lance. That's so. when I read it and I answer them. So That's right. Know. That's right. So uh, also important. You can always send me a letter snail mail. Yeah. <laughs> we get a PO box and they can mail, mail us stuff. Um, I would answer those. Yes, yes. It'd take a little while, but, you know, don't need to be in a hurry anyway, right? So uh, if you're new to The State of Us, you should know that we release new episodes Tuesdays and Thursdays as a podcast. Those same episodes heard on the weekends, AM and FM radio stations across the country. Uh, the other thing is, by the way, if you listen on AM and FM radio, you actually get a bonus episode every week. So, I mean, we really like people to listen to the podcast because it comes out first. But then if you listen to the radio, you actually, you depending on the station, you may get up to three episodes of The State of Us rather than just the standard two that everybody gets on the podcast. So, And you can find you can find our pod on Spotify, Overcast, Stitcher, Apple Pods, and everywhere pods are found. For The State of Us, <laughs> I'm Justin T. Weller. I'm Lance Jackson. Special thanks to Gen Z producer Bradley Butch. Thank you all, our audience from all generations. We'll see you next time. Be the change. Be sure to check out our website, thestateofus.org, for books, articles, and all the ways to tune in. Thestateofus.org.